Why exactly do I live in Japan? I often wonder about this, and I think that, of all things, it might be because of Dragon Quest. Hey everyone, it's Charles. Today we are doing another quick chat. Today I wanted to talk about games that have changed our lives. And if you don't play games, that's okay. Tell us about an anime or movie that's changed your life. Anyways, I'm about to tell you my story, but I hope that you will tell us your story in the comments. It's okay, you can pause the video and go ahead and uh, tell us your story right now. How has a game or anime or movie changed your life? Okay, thanks for doing that. Now it's quick chat time. So, Japan. One of the most common questions that I get asked is, Charles, how did you end up in Japan? And honestly, it's a very difficult question to answer because there are a lot of different moving parts, various different factors, and a lot of coincidences that brought me here. Was it because I watched a ton of anime when I was young? Was it because I dreamed of adventuring abroad? Was it because I never felt like I fit in well anywhere else? Was it because Japanese food is just so damn delicious? Was it because of my Japanese friends or my Japanese girlfriend at the time? Was it all because of a book about Japan that I read when I was 12? Or was it because of my love for games, particularly JRPGs? If I had to take one thread and trace it back, I would say that my love of JRPGs probably predates all the other things that I just mentioned. Now, this is a kind of interesting progression of events, so listen in if you're interested. Firstly, when I was a kid, I was absolutely obsessed with JRPGs like Final Fantasy IV, or II as it was called overseas back then, Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG, and later on, things like Xenogears and Golden Sun, Kingdom Hearts, etc, etc. JRPGs are a kind of unique type of game, and what makes a JRPG a JRPG is not exactly clear, but they tend to have this kind of quirky atmosphere and they tend to be linear with these protagonists who have really big personalities. Whereas in Western RPGs, the main character almost seems like more of an avatar for the player to interact with the world through. And while they're generally more open-ended and filled with interesting side quests, they tend to, in my opinion, have a bit less of a focus on the main narrative. Not to mention that JRPGs are also known for having an anime-like aesthetic and for a more Japanese style of storytelling with different types of characters and tropes that you wouldn't really see in Western RPGs. Anyways, regardless of what we determine a JRPG is, they are something I really love to play. And I've probably played over a hundred JRPGs in my lifetime. That is likely why I never turned out to be an astronaut or a doctor or anything like that. But as far as JRPGs go, there is one JRPG that started it all for me, and that is Dragon Quest 1, or Dragon Warrior as it was known overseas at the time, due to some funny legal poop. I actually remember my first experience with the game pretty clearly. I was on a family vacation, and it was a hot summer day. I was in my cousin's basement with that nice, nostalgic, unfinished basement smell, and we were just in enjoying geeking out with all kinds of games, you know, Super Mario Bros. 3, Gladiator, Punch-Out, all the good shit. And then she suddenly whipped out this cartridge I'd never seen before, Dragon Warrior, and plugged it in. And it totally blew my mind, especially as a kid who had never played an RPG, let alone a JRPG. I was just like, wait, you can name your character? You've got to fight all these monsters to level up if you want to be able to beat stronger monsters? You need to manage your equipment? You're totally f***ed if you don't buy torches? You can collect gold to buy stronger items and weapons? Just talking about it now brings me back to those memories of crushing Goldman after Goldman to save up gold. But yeah, you get the point. Dragon Quest 1 was, in retrospect, pretty simple and very, very grindy, but it also had soul, like all Dragon Quest games after it. There was just something about the world that you could really feel, if that makes sense. And I just couldn't put it down. That experience just totally blew me away and from then on I was really obsessed with JRPGs and RPGs in general. And since then I've plowed through countless JRPGs over the years as I mentioned, and yet like many others the Dragon Quest series has always had a very special place in my heart. <laughs> I have really great memories of just following the series in Nintendo Power, talking about the games with friends, and hopefully my mom doesn't watch this video, but I actually skipped about a month of university when Dragon Quest VIII came out so that I could just blast through that game because it was absolutely sick. And it was actually because of Dragon Quest VIII that I got to know some really cool people on the Nintendo Insider forums, which had their own PS2 and Xbox boards, oddly enough. And some of these people had imported Dragon Quest VIII well in advance of its North American release date, so we were enjoying having some really great chats about it. We became good friends and I ended up playing a role in starting this awesome website which sadly no longer exists but made a huge impact on my life at the time. And so it was largely because of my love of Dragon Quest that I got into games media and had the pleasure of covering E3 2009 way back then. What a great year that was and it was because of Dragon Quest that I got to interview really eccentric Japanese game designers like Yoshiro Kimura and got me thinking damn it would be so cool if I could talk to these people directly instead of through an interpreter. And it was because of Dragon Quest and these great experiences that I had with these awesome people who I worked with on the website 
that I started importing Japanese games because back then simultaneous worldwide releases of JRPGs and other Japanese games are something that just didn't happen. And you might have to wait a year or more to experience some of those games, and some of them never even made it out of Japan, like Giftpia or Doshin the Giant. Our site took pride in reviewing a wide variety of import games, and the first game I ever imported was Harvest Moon Magical Melody, and at the time, it was a little frustrating that I couldn't understand the Japanese to play through the game, but I also felt it was pretty cool that I was actually able to get through the game by using translation guides and such that were available on the internet. I guess you'd say it ignited a kind of spark in me. And I don't know if it was specifically because of this, but this certainly motivated me to start learning Japanese and eventually led to me moving to Japan. So really, why am I in Japan? It's honestly a long story, but if we trace it back to its roots, it may all come back to Dragon Quest 1. Because if I never got into Dragon Quest 1, the Dragon Quest series, online discussions with all these great people, importing Japanese games and so on, I seriously wonder if I would be living and doing business in Japan today. So I guess the smallest things can drastically change your life. Basically, thank you to Dragon Quest for being a source of inspiration and comfort to me over all these years, and thanks to you for listening this far. So, what's your story?